There's no name like the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's the Father in creation. He's the Son in redemption. He's the Holy Ghost in power. And his name is... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Giving honor to our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. I say to you, praise the Lord. It is, it is a traditional greeting of saints. And it is given to encourage each other that when we entreat each other, we, we, we don't really know what's going on in the, the lives of people. But whatever is going on, we come with the encouragement of praise the Lord. Think, think, things are not going like I want them to go, but praise the Lord. I, I've, got, I've got a bad report from the doctor, but praise the Lord. I just lost my job, but praise the Lord. We, 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 we get so cliche -ish. And it, it does something to me when I ask somebody how they're doing and they say, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Uh, I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. I, I knew that before I even asked you how you were doing. I know you're blessed. And I know you're highly favored. But I want to know how you're doing. You're blessed and highly favored and you might have pain in your body. Pastor, I, I, I really don't feel so good right now. I've got a pain. Hey, man, brother Higgins just came up, asked for prayer. Pastor, my eye is irritating me. It's painful. Would you pray for me? He, he's still blessed and highly favored, but he's got an eye condition. I want to know how you're doing. I, I know what state you're in. I know you're blessed and highly favored and too blessed to be stressed. We tell, we tell, we tell a pothole. <laughs> wait, wait a minute! I thought you were too blessed to be stressed. Why are you stressing now? Lord, help us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, I got troubles, I got, I got distresses, but praise the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. No matter what's going on in my life, he is worthy to be praised. Is there anybody here who love my Jesus? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know what. Amen. I, uh, hallelujah. Let, let's. Get, get all of the, the turkey out of us, whatever it is, ham, chitlins, whatever it is. We, we, we've come to worship Jesus. It's, it's amazing to me that the, the Orthodox Jews in Israel, when they, when they clap, they clap over their heads because when they applaud a man, they clap for the president. They, they clap for Michael Jordan or a touchdown or, or something glorious. But when it comes to God, they said, we can't just clap like we clap for somebody else. We got to invent a special clap. So they clap over their heads. That's just for Jesus. That's reserved just for him. Now, I'm, I'm not sure in life we're not going. <laughs> That's not a part of our 27. But just how he wants us to see him exalted 
in a class by himself. Amen? Amen. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Last week, we started, and I really, during the message, the Lord spoke to me and, and about a part two. So here I am with part two of the preached word from last week, wake up call for the church, part two. Jesus is coming soon. How many people this week have you encountered that a conversation came up about the coming of the Lord? Don't, don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. I, I would venture to say the, in this congregation, it was, if it happened, it was a minority. It, it, the saints, we ought to be talking about the coming of Jesus. But when, 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 when you wake up in the morning, you should get up and say, could this be the day? Could this be the day? Could this be the day? When you go out, when you go to bed at night, could this be the night? Could this be the night that while I'm sleeping, I'll be raptured? And when you wake up the next day, could this be the day? And even if it's not, guess what? It's closer than it was the day before. Be expecting the, the coming of the Lord. He's coming soon. So to all of you, today I will speak to you from this theme. God's caution, Jesus is coming. So what should I do? What should my reaction be? Wake up, shape up and look up. I will use those discussion areas, wake up church, shape up, clean up, and then look up. I, I, I will say that as we approach the end of 2016 and the advent of 2017, God's message, the center of his focus is the church. I know that the church exists in the context of the universe where we live. Our geopolitical situation, our national situation, our statewide situation, our local municipality, our situation, and then our personal situation, things that we have to deal with on a daily basis. And if you look around, as I said last week, you can, if you aren't careful, you, you, you will be distracted and, and questioned is God, are you still on the throne? Are, are you sleeping, Jesus? Have you taken your hands off the wheel? I, I, I thought, I heard your word that righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. Well, well, Lord, why is unrighteousness prospering? It goes against your nature. Why are you letting it flourish? Because he is saying, because that's not my focus now. My focus is my bride. The church, I am getting you ready. And when I get my bride completed, 
glorified, sanctified, spotless, and I take you out of the world, then I'm going to deal with the world. But right now, it might look like evil is prospering. But trust me, because I am God. Because I am God. Because I am God. Uh, I'll deal with that. Hallelujah. But right now, my heart, hmm, my love, hmm, and my, 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 my focus is on you. And I want your focus to be on me. I want us to have this spiritual hookup. You are the center of my focus. And I want, let me be the center of your focus. Don't, 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 don't let Mr. Trump distract you. No, uh -uh. no, 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 no. Trump is, didn't die for you. Trump didn't give you life. Yes, I know his name is a brand, but his name can't save him. Keep your eyes on me. Keep your eyes on me. If we aren't careful, we will be like Asaph in the 73rd Psalm. He looked at the, the prosperity of the wicked. He said, when I looked at the prosperity of the wicked, my feet well nigh slipped. He thought God was sleeping and uh, the righteous was suffering and the wicked was prospering. Uh, but the Lord dealt with his mind. He said, when I went into the sanctuary, he opened up my mind. Then God showed me the end, how the end, how it ends. Hallelujah. 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 So saints, wake up, shape up, clean up, look up. Jesus is talking to the church. As you listen today, if you are in the kingdom of Jesus, if you are in the body of Christ, I, I, I plead with you. Don't be distracted. Don't, don't lose focus. Don't fall out with Jesus just because you didn't get the results that you thought should have been. You, you be you, let me be me, and let Jesus be God. He's speaking to us. Are you listening? As I said to you last week, in order to answer the phone, someone calls you at 3 o'clock in the morning if you are sleeping. And I understand that there are five levels of sleeping. And when you get to level five, I think they call it REM, but it's a state where you are just, you're suspended. You're completely shut off from reality. And, and I know myself, I grew up in Beaufort, South Carolina, next to the air station. And when they first built it, man, we, we couldn't sleep. Because they, I don't know why, they, they work on those jets at night. And they rev those things up at 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning. You're like, hey, don't you realize that there's folks out here trying to sleep? Folks, in about six months, they could blow up the base. We were sleeping as... Our, our bodies adjusted, and we could sleep through that. For the church, that's not a good condition because you have to wake up in order to answer the phone. There's a message. Jesus is calling. He wants to tell us something, but you got to wake up and pick up the phone to hear what he's saying. He is giving you alert. He's giving you warning. He's saying, don't 
fall asleep. I'm coming like a thief in the night. Don't play with your salvation. Don't get offended because I don't do what you think I ought to do. When you think I ought to do it, how you think I ought to do it, let me be God. So he sins. I am just one of the voices that he has sent into the world as he did with Isaiah, with Israel. He sent a message. He told Isaiah, ah, mother peoples, he told Isaiah, cry aloud and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Cry aloud and spare not. Shout it like a trumpet. And that's what I intend to do. City of life, I intend to cry aloud. I want you to be aware. I want you to be alert. I want you to be awake. I don't want you to fall asleep. Let, let, let the voice of the Lord crescendo in this place. Let it crescendo that I am soon to come. He's giving us in the last days a spiritual evaluation. And I want to read to you the report from the doctor. It comes to us in Revelation, the third chapter, beginning at verse 14, unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, Right, these things saith the amen. Before he speaks, he wants the church to know who's talking. He says the amen. That means it's the final answer. That means there's nothing that comes after amen. That's it. After amen, it's all over. These things saith the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. That's his resume. Now, here is the condition. He says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. See your life? He's talking to the church age that we're living in. Starting with Ephesus, Sardis, Pergamon, Thyatira. He comes involved. Philadelphia. He evolved to the church age we're living in. And he says to the church age we're living in, I've examined you and you are lukewarm. You are neither cold nor hot. He said, I would that you would be cold or hot. Don't, don't, don't try to straddle the kingdom and the world. One foot in the church and the other foot dancing with Beyonce. He said, be one or the other. He said, because you're trying to dance with Beyonce and walk with me, you make me sick on my stomach. Because I'm, I'm dancing with Beyonce because I'm trying to win some over there. You're not winning nothing. In fact, he says, be careful when you take hot coals in your bosom, you'll be burned. The folks in Beyonce's world are looking for a difference because they know that everything they got is not real.
And when you compromise, and you think you have the real thing, they look at you and say, you're no different. They're looking for a difference. They're looking for someone that will stand up and says, I'll be a peculiar person. I'll be separate from the world. I'll be separate from sinners. I'll be a holy roller. I'll be one of those sanctified folk. I'll be one of those crazy folk you're talking about. But wait until they get in trouble and look who they're going to sin for. Go get that holy roller. Go get that sanctified person. I know they can get a prayer through. I know that works. So then, as Revelation 3, 16. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither hot, neither cold, nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. I don't know about you, but I'll tell you, when Lady M fixed my food, even though the pot is hot, sometimes she takes up my food because I like to see the steam coming off. She put it in the microwave. Ah, I like my hot food hot. And I like my cold food cold. It may not make sense to you, but I like when I'm eating. I want to be able to blow it before I put it in my mouth. I, I, I don't care how good it is. If it's lukewarm, it loses something to me. I, I want my coffee hot. I want it hot. When I go out to a restaurant and they give me lukewarm coffee, I send it back. I said, ma'am, I want it fresh and I want it hot. And if you got Folgers in the house, I want Folgers. Now, if, 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 if I'm just a man and that was mine, what do you think about God? Don't bring him no lukewarm stuff. Don't bring it. No, 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 no. On, on Sunday, you on fire. But on Monday, you are what? I, I, I can't control my flesh. I can't control my mouth. I can't control my hands. I can't control my feet. But when I get to the sanctuary, well, we, I'm on fire. He said, you make me sick on my stomach. He said, why? Because thou saith, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knoweth not. That's what, see, that's what you say. That's your assessment. We got a beautiful sanctuary. Ah, we got nice carpeted floors. We got different designs and colors. And then, then we got the, the, our pews that contract. Aren't they nice? And, and, and uh, in the wintertime now, it's so warm, you got a fan. It's really nice in here. And, and look at our videos. It's, and look at our musicians. And, and everything is wonderful. And, and, and if you keep, and keep on, maybe next year at this time, we're going to have a nice parking lot. We'll have it all striped. And, and everything is beautiful. Uh-huh. Yes, that, that's, that's our assessment of ourselves. But Jesus says, knoweth not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Oh, he's talking to the world. No, he's not. He's talking to the church. He's talking to his church. Because you, you got the Holy Ghost, but it can't control your body. It can't control your tongue. It can't control where you go, what you do, or what you say. You say you got it, but you act just like the world. No self-control. Mm -mm. mm -mm. He said, that's my report. He said, I'm getting ready to come back. Know you not that unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. We're going to get to the Thanksgiving in a little bit. But we got to look at what it really is. 
if the doctor's going to heal you, he's got to tell you how bad the case is before he gives you the solution. If, if you go to a doctor and he tells you something that's not real, you say, no, no, I'll, I'll, listen, doctor, don't, don't play with me. I, I want to know what it is. Don't tell me that, that your, your report is 80% good. But, but you got a, a spot on your lungs, and it's getting bigger month by month. I don't care how good the rest of your body is. If that, if that spot is cancer, it's going to nullify the rest of your condition if you don't take care of it. So he's giving us an evaluation. Now, here's the solution. In verse 18. I counsel to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich. And I mean rich spiritually. Now, not that you got plush everything. You're driving fine cars and nice parking lot and fine sound system and video. Uh, you speak in tongues for hours but don't speak to your brother or sister across the church. You, 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 you can dance in the spirit but, but, but you got envy and jealousy one for the other. You, 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 yes, you do a lot of good things in the spirit. But you are jealous of your brother or sister, their position that they hold in the church. Uh-huh. You, you gossip. You can't wait to get out of church to get on the phone. They start gossiping. He said, I, I, I want you I want to deal with that. Verse 19, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Wake up, answer the door. If any man will hear my voice, that's his word. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and I will sup with him and he with me. The reason that, that as the prophet of God, I'm called to cry aloud, it's because this is a parallel to Noah's ark. When, when Noah was building the ark for 120 years, Man had never known the phenomenon of rain. They had never seen rain. But Noah was telling them not only was it going to rain, it was going to flood. And, 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 and can you imagine you being Noah, never seen this. All you got is the word from God telling you to build an ark and that is going to flood the earth and you are building this ark and you are listening to him and then there are lapses of time when you don't hear nothing from him and you are preaching to the people and you are telling the people it's going to rain it's going to rain it's going to rain it's going to rain and folks are looking at you like you are stupid but you know you heard the voice of God and you keep on building and you keep on building and you keep on working and folks are ridiculing you and calling you out your name. They tell you that you're stupid, that you are crazy, that you don't have good sense. Ah, oh, but you keep on working. You keep on hammering and you keep on praying and you keep on telling your family, stand fast, be still and know that I am God. Keep on working. Keep on working. I know I heard his voice. I know I heard what he said and I'm committed to it. Hallelujah. And then the floods, when the ark was built, Watch what happened. When the ark is built, the floods come. But before the floods come, God shuts the door to the ark. Now, here's the, the bad news is that the earth was destroyed. Every living thing. 
except only those that were in the ark. The good news is that the flood could not come until when? Until the door was shut. In our time, the shutting of the door is the rapture. No matter how bad things get, the devil is restrained. You know why? Because you and me are still in the earth. Because Jesus has his church still in the earth. And he's telling the devil, you can't do what you want to do as long as my children are in the world. I, I've, got, I've got a seal on them. And you can only do what I allow you to do. But, but when I get my children out of the world, when I get them out of the world, then I'm going to take my hands off of you and you can do your thing. But as long as I got my children in the world, I'm going to protect my children. I got to keep ahead about my children and you can't do what you want to do and even if I let you do it I'm going to still be there with them I'm going to take them through because I'm going to see that it works together for their good hallelujah hallelujah so the eyes of the Lord or over the righteous. Oh my God. And he hears us. He hears us. He hears us when we pray. So now, and, and, and you look around, and in Noah's day, eight people off the face of the earth were saved. Eight people. In our day, this is the last of the last days. We are in the Laodicean church age. When the rapture occurs, the people that will be saved will not be the majority of humankind. Well, what do you base that on? The scripture tells us in Luke, I think it's the seventh chapter. He said, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to righteousness and few there be that find it. But wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction and many go therein. Folks, don't look for the crowd to follow you with Jesus. Don't look for the crowds to follow you in righteousness. It's only going to be a few. But don't worry about being few in number. If God be for you, who can be against you? You stand up for righteousness. Put on the whole armor of God that you'll be able to stand and having done all to stand. Don't worry about being popular. You're not going to be popular. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now he's in the process. He's in the process of sanctifying us. He's purifying us. He's purging us. Ha, ah, he's taking out of us everything that's not like him. And he is going to clean us up and make us spotless without spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing. And in Ephesians 5, 25 to 27, he's going to present us to himself. At the end of this process, we are going to be his spotless bride. So he is using the world's current events and situations to get us ready, to get us ready, to wake us up, hallelujah, so that we'll be ready for his coming. That's what he's doing. Our spiritual condition is critical. I just told you, the cry from heaven is Jesus is calling us to readiness. Get ready for his return. There is nothing 
in our lives that should ever exceed that in priority. Nothing you can do that's more important than being ready when Jesus comes back. Nothing. There is not, no thing that you can do that's more important than being ready to see Jesus. Either through the rapture or through death. We, we gather from Sunday to Sunday. There may be, there are folks that are dying right now that yesterday this time, death wasn't even on their agenda. Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Wake up. Wake up. The mouth of the Lord is crying, crying aloud. Don't take your salvation for granted. Wake up and know what time it is. Get ready for his return. All right, pastor, shape up and clean up. So what does that mean? That means being transformed into the image of Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let it operate in you. Let it, let it guide you like a GPS. Let it direct your path. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all of thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Let him guide you. Let him lead you. Let him direct you. He is molding us and shaping us into his image. So he is using our trials our test, our tribulation. He's using all of that to mold us and shape us in his image. There's nothing that he is doing that he is just allowing it to happen for no good reason. And we know that all things worketh together for good to them that love God, the call according to his purpose. When Joseph was going through, looked like the more he was committed, the worse it got. His brothers tried to kill him. And uh, this is a word, uh, it's going to be the folks closest to you that can hurt you the most. So don't be surprised. His brothers tried to kill him. He got away, sold them. When he got to Potiphar's house, Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him, not just once, but day after day after day. He was all alone. He didn't have a choir, Brother Donnell. He didn't have preaching. He didn't have the congregation. He was all by himself. What are you going to do when you are isolated and you can't get to the church on Sunday morning? You can't come to prayer meeting on Monday night. You can't come to Bible study. You got to have the word of God in you so you know what you know. I'm going to stand on his word because God is with me. I'll stand no matter what. I'll stand no matter if I'm persecuted, if I'm put down, if I I perish I perish but I'm gonna stand he said I can't do this evil in the sight of God hallelujah how, how many how many how many how many of us all of us when you're home and you're looking at movies and TVs Whatever else you're watching, if, 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 if you knew that Jesus was going to knock at the door and say, this is Jesus, I, I want to come in and spend the evening with you. Would you have to turn the channel? Uh, would you have to move the bottles and put them in the trash can? Would you have to clean out the refrigerator? Would you have to reorder your house if you know that Jesus was stopping by? Well, I come to tell you, guess what? He is there. He is there. 
when you are watching he is right there when you're doing what you're doing he is right he is right there he said I know I see what you're doing I hear what you're saying and I know what you're thinking I know what you're thinking before it gets to your mind oh now pastor you done pull the rag off me now what do I do now let me tell you how to be transformed repent 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 oh my god second chronicles 7 and 14 if if my people if my people when my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways that's repentance turn from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven 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 I'll heal their land and I'll forgive their sins. It's all right. It's all right to march for a civil call. Civil dis disobedience is not disavowed by the Bible. But there's nothing that a child of God, there's nothing that the city of life can do more powerful than come to Monday night prayer and put it on the altar and say, Jesus, we need you, Lord. The heart of the king is in the Lord's hand. And as the rivers of water, he turneth it with us however he will. Jesus will get your enemy to work in your behalf and they don't even know it but you can't fight your own battle if you can't no 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 you got to let him fight your battle if the Lord fight my battle victory might be mine hallelujah I remember in my first six months here I was challenged. I, I was challenged a lot of times, and, and still sometimes. You, that's all right. You don't. You don't want to know the, the battles of a pastor, uh, but my wife knows some of them. But but they, they they came to my wife, and they were challenging the gospel that I was preaching, and they told my wife. He said, "Listen, when I go to your church, when I come to the city of life, and I hear Pastor Middleton's preach, he said, I I I go away and hear my notes." from his sermon I got nothing hear my notes from his Bible class I got nothing but when I go to other churches and I listen to what they say I got pages of notes before she came the Lord told me to shut your mouth I'll be your defender Before the, the conversation was over, it was discovered that the young lady didn't even have the Holy Ghost. She left out of my office and I haven't set eyes on her ever since. Let the Lord fight your battle. 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 Fight your battle. Use your core disciplines daily prayer reading the word of god meditation on the word of god solitude spending time alone with god it'll transform you hallelujah i'm going to give you an assignment hallelujah i want to put that yes and then and i'm going to wrap this up Every day from now to January 1st, at the end of the year, most people do what we call introspection. They look at their lives in 2016 
and they make resolutions for 2017. Most of them don't last a week, but that's all right. But from now until January 1st, I want you to pray every day. Do your own, allow Jesus to do his spiritual evaluation of each of us. Ask God to give you his assessment from the scriptures. And I want you to pray these two scriptures. Psalms 139, 23, and 24. Search me and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And Jesus, see if there be any wicked way in me. Not, not your brother, not your sister, not your husband, not your children, Lord, but me. Do a spiritual MRI on me. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I don't want to go into 2017 like I was in 2016. Uh, Lord, I want to go higher, plant my feet on higher ground. And then Psalms 51 and 7, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. And, and come to Bible study on Wednesday night. I'm going to be talking about this, this, this one verse. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me. That's in your blood. Just to pique your interest, when Jesus was on the cross and he had finished his work, he says, I thirst. They took the vinegar and sopped a hyssop bush and hyssop was held up to Jesus' mouth. What was the significance? in now Psalms 51 is talking about hyssop. Come to Bible class. Purge me with hyssop. I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Psalms 10, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Pray those two prayers as you're praying. Second, Daily exercise in the core spiritual discipline. Prayer, the word, meditation, solitude, and fasting on assigned days. Our church fast is every Wednesday. Tuesday night from 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock on Wednesday. And as God directs you individually. And if you need help, guidance, Come and talk to your pastor. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't get zealous and then come to church on Monday and say, I heard from the Lord. He, he gave me a 40-day fast. Come talk to your pastor. I'm not telling you not to do it if the Lord said. I just want to make sure God is telling you that. You, sometimes we have zeal, but not according to knowledge. My job is to help you with knowledge and wisdom, all right? Amen. Last part, wrapping up, look up, look up, look up. Hallelujah. Wake up, shape up, clean up. Now, look up. Be excited. Look for the coming of the Lord. Look for the rapture every day. Live your life each day as if that day is the rapture. Live every day. Is this my last day, Jesus? Is this my last day? Because Lord, if it is, I want to leave this earth in a blaze of glory. I, I, I want to leave this earth in a praise for my Jesus. I want to exit out of the earth and into his presence with glorious praise. I, I want to be there. I want, I want to be like, like when, when the Lord allowed Stephen to be stoned to death. 
And Paul was in charge. Saul then was in charge of the detail. When he was being stoned to death, he didn't curse. He didn't revile. But he looked up to heaven and he saw the heavens open. And he saw Jesus standing. He wasn't sitting on his throne. He was standing and he ushered, he ushered Stephen into his presence. Here's Stephen going out with a blaze of glory. He said, Father, lay this not to their charge. You know what? I believe with everything that's in me, the Bible never says this. But I believe that Saul was touched by what he saw. And I believe that it pierced his heart. And no matter how much he had persecuted the people of Jesus, he said, that thing is real. That thing is real. I saw it with my own eyes. I saw Stephen being stoned to death. And I saw him praying for his attackers. I saw him praying and interceding for his perpetrators. That thing has to be real. Hallelujah. Saints, that's how I want to go out. Hello, Grand, I want to go out like that. I want to go out in a blaze of glory. Say, Lord, I want to be like Apostle Paul. I, hallelujah. When he got to the end of his life, he writes to Timothy to tell him, hallelujah, how glorious his entrance into heaven was going to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Saints, you don't have to only imagine. Our entrance into to God's presence is real. It's real. It's real. It's real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we finish our course, when we have kept the faith, we can go out like the Apostle Paul. I have fought a good fight. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Now I have kept the faith. Now there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which Christ the righteous judge shall give me at that day ah, but not to me only but to all those that love his appearing that's looking for him that's excited about his coming Lord I'm looking for you look up look up look up thought for the week Hallelujah. Thought for the week. Now, let's read it together. And when these things began to come to pass, do what? And do what? Why? Don't be distracted. Look up. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Lift your heads up, not down. Don't be despondent, but look up, be excited. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Look up, lift up your heads. Hallelujah. For your redemption draweth nigh. Let's stand. Hallelujah. As you go through this week, I want us, as we pray, earnestly seek the Lord. Know what time it is. Psalms 91 and 8 says, Only with thine eyes shall thou behold the reward of the wicked. When you are raptured out of this world, 
and Jesus began to pour his wrath out, we'll only see it from glory with our eyes. You're going to see the wrath of God being poured out on everyone that sat and listened and rejected God's word. Don't let it be said too late. Today is the day of salvation. Today that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. He's here to save you. He's here to strengthen you. Let's look to the Lord. Lord Jesus, we've heard your word. You have spoken to us, clarion, clearly, unmistakably. Lord, we know the way of righteousness. We know that you are calling for us to be holy, separate from sinners. You're calling us to a life of holiness, righteousness that reflects you. Lord, we've come with repentant hearts. Lord, from this day forward, deal with us in a new way. We are broken and contrite in your presence. And your word has declared a broken and contrite heart. Thou will not despise. So we're here, Lord. Humbling ourselves before you. Hear our voice. Heal our land. And forgive our sins. Lord, speak to that heart. That's been listening to your word. Help them to say yes to your will. Lord, and those that are in the kingdom, help us to be more than we've ever been, more committed, more given to you, more surrendered, more yielded, more yes to your will. Our desire is to be conformed to your image. Lord, work on us and start with me. Work on us and start with me. So we commend ourselves to you. In Jesus' name is your servant's prayer. Amen. If there's one soul, if there's one, that you know the Lord has been speaking to you, and you're asking, what should my response be? Your response is to say yes to your will, Lord.